Welcome to my Artifact Experience farming video for Genshin Impact as a version 2.4. This route covers many double artifacts producing points, as well as limiting points that are near other investigation spots to avoid the risk of clicking the wrong prompt. First, let's cover the characters I recommend. Kazuha gives us the first half of the Anima Resonance buff, as well as a passive that decreases stamina usage when running. If you don't have him, I'd suggest another Animo character, such as the Traveler, and Kaya instead of Toma for his height, and to provide the same stamina usage reducing passive. The height of the active character directly determines the running speed of your party. Toma gives us that long stride, as well as shields, to help avoid combat during this route. Rosaria provides us with a passive that increases movement speed at night, so we'll want to keep the time set between 1800 and 0600 hours. Sayu gives us the second half of the Animo Resonance buff, as well as the ability to roll faster than the fastest unbuffed characters run, and without using stamina. That gives us a faster speed over distances that we'd otherwise run out of stamina on, though we don't cover too many of those, so any other Animo character works as the Animo buff is the most important part of this party, as it increases movement speed and reduces overall stamina usage when running and climbing, especially when stacked with Rosaria's passive, and greatly reduces the time it takes to farm low-level artifacts. Since artifacts mostly respawn exactly 24 hours after collecting them, I like to start in Chinktsua Village, as you can easily see the first artifact there and check that they've started respawning. We'll also be going approximately from north to south and west to east during this route. Here you can see we're setting the clock to make sure that we have as much night time as possible for Rosaria's passive. We will be collecting incidental pickups such as the bamboo shoots, as you'll see in a moment. I'm also including, in the top left corner to the right of the minimap, a count of the investigation points we've used, as well as the number of artifacts, weapons, and the amount of mora we've collected. For those who aren't aware, you can only activate 100 investigation points per day before they stop spawning, so we need to get only 99 before getting to the shipwreck on and I'm hoping I pronounce this correctly, Serai Island in Inazuma, so that all of the investigation points on the shipwreck do spawn. This wraps up Chinsu Village and the easy to spot investigation points that get us started, so now we move into Dragon Spine for the next batch. This is the first teleport of two that we'll use to get to easy investigation points. First, head over this cliff toward the cave in the direction of the cryohypostasis. You'll also occasionally find star silver here that you can mine with a Claymore character like Sayu, as well as some ice slimes. You can use Toma's shield to evade their attacks or just dodge them like we did here. At this point, we're going to need to jump down this pit here and then run into the cave and go into a small cave off to the side. To get into the side cave, it does help to have a really short character like Sayu who can get under this small entrance, and then a tall character like Toma to be able to collect the artifacts from the top shelf in case they land up there. From Dragon Spine, we move to Saltere. As you can see, I swim across here with Toma. However, full height female characters such as Rosaria actually swim faster than the full height male characters.
I went a little too fast here, and because the game is already loading the map before the Mora could get received by the character model, you don't get to see how much was received from that last investigation point until the teleport loads. This is another area where you can either engage in combat with these treasure hoarders or use stealth for the first two points and use Toma's shield to avoid any incoming attacks. Usually I fight them, but today I just avoided them to cut down on time to provide a little bit more of an accurate estimate for the duration of this full route, which I will be providing at the end of this video as well as in the video description. If you don't have Sayu for mining these incidental bits of ore, especially if you don't have Kazu as well and are using Kaya, if you have Razor, you can bring him to provide both a Claymore for mining and the improved running stamina usage passive. This next area we're going to starts off with a Geovashap hatchling nearby. If your party isn't a high enough level, you may want to avoid it. Coming up on the right here, if you veer too close to this building, is also a Fatui Geochanter Bracer that you may want to avoid if you're not looking for combat. You can also get some meat. Another reason to avoid the Fatui up by the house is that on the corner near the Fatui is another similar looking investigation point that does not contain an artifact. Also, the barrels behind this boat avoid as they are also not worth getting if you're looking mostly for artifacts. This is one of the few points where you're about to run out of stamina and having Sayu is very nice. On top of that, as you go past these bushes, there's a couple of boxes that she can break right away. And here again, a tall character like Toma or Kaya makes it easier to get any artifacts that land on the top shelves. And you can pick up the contents of those boxes before you leave. Frankly, these next points are the furthest distance from each other, as well as the slowest to get, and will probably be the first points replaced if there's any new good spots in the 2.5 update. However, each of these spots can give two artifacts, so for now they are better than any other small spots I've found like this. Also, it's very easy for the artifacts from this point to fall behind this deck and underneath, so you want to be careful and make sure you collect them. I didn't notice this until I was editing, but the artifacts I just collected did not come up under the obtained list on the left side of the screen. I did count them in the counter, as I believe I did get them. Also, you can collect a violet grass on some days, as they respawn every 48 hours. Normally I do fight these slimes, so you'll see I went into automatic mode and used my shield on them. However, I did not stick around. This is another point where you can either fight the enemies or dodge them or use Toma's shield to avoid damage, which you'll see I do right here. The next set of investigation points are actually just on the other side of that same teleport point we used to get to these investigation points. So the fastest way, instead of going through those slimes again, is to just teleport back and then run over. As you can see where I'm standing, there is sometimes a crystal there that you can mine with Sayu, which I demonstrated by mining the lack of crystal with Sayu. And here again, you can see more a launch from the investigation point, but I go too fast for the game to register how much I received, until the new warpoint loads. 
This ends up being our last set of investigation points in Liwa. If you have not unlocked an Azuma, this will be as far as you can get. However, this does net you a result of 39 investigation points totaling, in this case, 51 artifacts and 5,500 Mora. Unfortunately, the best way to get to our first investigation point is through the Suigetsu Pool in an Azuma, which is a domain that requires a puzzle to unlock. If you have not unlocked it, you'll have to go a little bit more of a roundabout way. Also, now that we're in an Azuma, there will be some nastier enemies nearby. You can see the health bar of a ruined sentinel wandering by. You can just run past him, though. As you can see, I grabbed this Electrogranum. However, if you don't have a tall character, 240 stamina, and level 40 of the Sacred Sakura Tree, you will not be able to do this in one cycle using that same Electrogranum. In which case, you can just get the Tanuki by grabbing another one when you get him to turn into a little torch here. The Electrogranum will light the torch and you can get the investigation point. Now we head down to a little secluded cave. If you haven't been into this cave before, it is inhabited by a bunch of treasure hoarders. However, once you've cleared them, they remain cleared, and there are five investigation points in here. Easiest way is to start on this ledge so you don't have to climb it later. It is also worth noting that none of these investigation points produce two artifacts. However, having five clustered together and a tanuki above is rather convenient to have all six together. This next set of investigation points on Watatsumi Island is complicated by two Hydro Spectres. They are very hard to avoid, and they will follow you as the four investigation points are spread out. This first one's easy to get. However, once you've activated the two specters, it may be easier to fight them than to try and avoid them. I also usually fight them because I need specter husks. However, this is also the only bit of combat we'll run into. The trick to these specters is to avoid letting them use that pulsing water move near themselves or each other, otherwise they'll heal a large amount of HP. If you think they're about to use that move, then you should stay a little bit away so that you can try and get them to use it on you and not heal themselves. Also, flanking them to prevent them from running out over open water and making it difficult to hit them if you don't have a ranged character. As you can see, I did not do an excellent job of this. Also, my Rosaria is level 40 right now, and Sayu and Rosaria are not equipped with anything much. You can also grab a few loach pearls in here. As you'll see from here on out as well, we run into a few small creatures that Sayu makes it easier to collect, such as crystal flies and loaches. This spot, as well as many in Azuma spots, are hard to get to if you haven't completed all the environmental puzzles. This spot is also not very good, as it only has two points and they don't give multiple artifacts. However, it doesn't have any enemies or any confusing extra investigation points. However, if you can't get in here, there is a point on Watatsumi Island, on the easternmost point, where you can get two artifact investigation spots. This next spot is a little unintuitive as well. I'm about to run around the wrong way. However, you want to get onto this boardwalk here. Do not get the investigation point in the barrel. Here's where we'll also start collecting some weapons, which can help those people who need to upgrade their weapons. You're going to want to be very careful when collecting this point because, as you can see, it can launch itself right off the edge. I got lucky this time. 
I should note, to the right of this boardwalk here is a tanuki, which will give you an artifact. However, where he ends and creates his artifact investigation point is right next to a non-artifact investigation point that's almost impossible to avoid. So I avoid that one and have worked in another couple of points to make up for it. Starting with this next point, we start to get to some spots where other walkthroughs will have you launching cannons to unveil other investigation points. For people who are lazy like myself, that gets too complicated. However, this is one of those cannons. The route we have here avoids a lot of that extra rigmarole and gets much easier points. Also down here, you'll want to be careful. Make sure to get this point here. There's a point by the guy who's digging, and you may want to use your shield to avoid damage here. And then don't get any other points except the one on this cart, and then just teleport away to avoid the enemies. As you can say, it's now become day, or just about. And so we would normally lose Zarya's nighttime movement speed passive. However, if we reset our clock now, we'll be able to continue moving with an additional 10% speed. This next point is a little odd in that it only has two investigation points. It's a little longer to get to than many we've been through. However, it does have the chance to produce two artifacts per point which unfortunately it did not do today. And this is another point where you want to be careful as there's only one investigation point across this water here. If you stick to the left with a tall character, you only have to swim a few feet. Make sure to get only the investigation point in this boat and then you can just teleport back across instead of walking through the water. And I accidentally changed my investigation point marker to a monster marker, and I'm not sure how. To your right, there's also some treasure hoarders and samurais that you may want to avoid. We're also coming up on another point where you will collect a weapon. If you are trying to avoid weapons and only get artifacts, just be aware. And this next point also can frequently give two. We're now going into an area where there's a lot of extra investigation points you're going to want to avoid, as they're all vegetables. We'll also be getting a weapon in just a moment, and another weapon shortly after that. We can get this Tanuki, who moves into this bush. Just follow him along. You can get those carrots, avoid the point by him, and then get these two points and the Tanuki, which is this pot here. And that included one of the weapons I was talking about, and the other is here. You'll want to also avoid the fourth investigation spot in that barrel. The weapon there is hard to avoid, though, because it is on top of the artifact investigation point. Here, I recommend breaking the pots as you run through them. You'll see them in a moment. As you see here, you can get stuck on the pots, which is why I recommend breaking them. There's also a point right over this ledge. You can again break the pots to keep from getting stuck. Kazuo also has the nice benefit of making it easier to clear longer gaps like this without climbing at the end, which takes up a little more time. We now move on to Sire Island, where there's a lot more enemies who will try to disrupt us from collecting our artifacts, and where you'll see some of the crystal flies I mentioned that Sayu can help collect. Avoid all of the points here, except for these by this little weapon rack. And then you can teleport away to avoid the enemies.
here you'll want to be careful as there is one investigation point at the end of this little trio that you want to avoid that's very close. And then we move over here where you'll encounter some hilly churls and a sama churl. You can use Toma's shield to avoid them or just dodge. And this is also where you want to be careful as that investigation point is safe, but get the box and not the barrel here and then climb this wall and there will be another box and barrel above where you want to get the box and avoid the lower point. At least I believe that's a barrel. I can't see it through the bush. This box is safe and the last one up at the top will be guarded by some hydro slimes and if you don't forget those crystal flies are there like I did, you can grab them. And now you're done here, so you can just teleport away. This is another point where there's a lot of extra investigation points you want to be careful of, but none of them are too hard to avoid. You can also get these carrots. And this one is also a weapon if you're looking to avoid those. This is the hardest point because you want to avoid that extra one on the corner. There's also a point to your right that's just ore, generally iron ore. You can, however, sometimes get crystal ore from those investigation points, but it's very rare. Normally, Sayu doesn't get stuck here, but I did have some trouble today. Otherwise, this is normally a nice point where you can take a nice long run with Sayu and avoid using stamina. And to your right will be a Fatui, so you'll want to grab the two investigation points on the left here first. Because as soon as you get his ire, you will attract a whole bunch of other Fatui who pop up. It's also possible to get some Amethyst ore here, as you can see. There's usually two. And again, having Sayu or another Claymore character helps with that. Razor actually has a trick where his held elemental skill explodes all of these ores at the same time. As you will see, we are up to 98 artifact investigation points. You can collect these eggs, and just beyond the ship here is one last tanuki. Having somebody like Toma to produce fire is very helpful, as the tanuki will turn into a torch that you have to ignite at the end. Unfortunately, Tanukis have never, at least for me, produced two artifacts from a single point. So as new artifact points are introduced, the Tanukis can probably be replaced in this. And now we're on the ship. Once you've entered, all of the investigation points will spawn. So just collect every... On the basement floor here is where I actually discovered that if you use the ore investigation points, you can get crystal. The nice thing is, though, once you've entered, all of these points have spawned, and you can't unspawn them unless you leave and come back. So just make sure to do this all in one go. Otherwise, you've already gotten all 100 investigation points, and you will not be able to get these points to spawn again. Now, in the past, it was possible to prevent yourself from being able to do certain quests where you had to investigate something and you already had 100 investigation points that day. I have subsequently found that after doing this run, I have investigated quests required investigation points, so I'm not sure if that's something they fixed globally or just for that, but it is something to be aware of. If you do use all 100 investigation points in a day, you may not be able to complete certain quests.
These two ore drops can also drop light blue crystal ore, the non-magical kind, though they rarely do. Now that we've collected the last point, just go make sure you've collected everything that's dropped, including the slime drops, if you killed the slimes. Speaking of which, some time can be cut from this route by avoiding any combat at all. Probably about two to three minutes altogether. I've run it in about 20 minutes before, though this took 23 minutes to run with a few inefficiencies that I introduced through combat. All in all, we investigated 131 out of 100 daily points, received 127 artifacts, 9 weapons, and 7700 mora. I have received as many as 150 artifacts before, though that varies because there are many artifact points that can drop either one or two artifacts. You can also cut some of the weapon investigation points found in Inazuma. For example, there's two artifact points by the easternmost teleport point on Watatsumi Island that are easy to substitute in, as well as a few others scattered around Watatsumi Island that aren't too far apart from each other. Hopefully this helps you farm artifact experience with as little time or fuss as possible. Thanks for watching!